It is Thursday the 22nd of August. I'm your host Ryan Keir and this is the Quantum Cast. Alright, so I just want to give an update on yesterday's podcast. I had finally received my four pack of Super Malt, if you haven't already seen on Twitter. And oh my, they're just divine. I left a couple in the fridge. I'm going to have one after I finish this podcast as a bit of a celebration. But anyways, let's get into today's headline stocks. In fact, focus stocks for the day include Rose Petroleum, a little issue of equity there. And uh, that isn't something that serious, in fact. But um, we'll talk about it briefly. There is a conventional farm out agreement by 88 Energy. You'd love to hear this. You would never expect these two companies to work together. And we have half year earnings for Premier Oil, an old favorite of mine that rarely performs above expectations. But let's see, we'll be interested to see what the results look like. And a preliminary statement for Godwin or Goodwin PLC. Okay, so let's get into the first one. The first one that we've mentioned is Rose Petroleum. This company has mentioned that they are going to have an issue of equity for about two and a half million shares for quote unquote professional advisor services. Oh, advisory services performed in the first half of 2019. So they're basically diluting existing shareholders to pay whoever these advisors are. They haven't really mentioned anything about that. And uh, all we can really see that these shares account for about 1.4% of existing share capital. The only issue is when you pay advisors in shares, it's likely that you're going to see them sell off their shares in the open market. And that will likely have the shares falling further than they already have. In fact, the shares had a bit of a recovery recently. I don't know exactly where they are. In fact, they were about 1.1 pence per share at lows. In fact, 0.96, I remember. In fact, I had a position at 1.1. I remember seeing it go down to 0.96 odd. But I assume the price now should be around halfway in between their highs and that. Uh, not actually, no. It seems that they had 1.5 pence per share being the last closing price. So Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. or 4.35 p.m., which is the uh, off-the-market auction. They were at 1.54. So I assume... They have a little bit of a widespread because the shares have been relatively illiquid recently and they had highs in recent weeks of around two pence per share. But in 52 weeks, they have had highs of around 3.9 pence per share. So this is quite a spiky stock, but the fact that they're placing again and again and again is a little bit worrying. And just to summarize, the company has a market cap of 2.6 2.6 million pounds and is obviously loss making because it's exploration. Now, moving on to 88 Energy. This company has really surprised me. In fact, I didn't expect to mention these two companies in the same sentence regarding a farm out. Wow. 88 Energy has provided an update related to to the farm out process for its conventional prospect portfolio at Project Icewine. Many of us are familiar. Icewine was quite a popular topic back in 2016 when 88 Energy had 10 bagged on a lot of uh, flow rate news regarding their assets. So here's the mystery company. Let's allow a little bit of a pause for intensity. Premier Oil. Can you believe it? I, I can't believe it. I, I'm, I mean, I'm shocked. I need more than one Super Mall. I might just need to shower in Super Mall to try and understand this. Premier basically is uh, has an option 
to earn 50% working interest by spending $15 million. So I assume that Premier is spending the overwhelming majority of CapEx, aka capital expenditure, on this project. Um, 88 Energy is operating the Charlie One Well. Nothing too special there, but uh, there are a couple of other agreements. I think 88 are going to retain 30% of this area A that they've mentioned, working interest of that. Um, and I can see that they basically farmed it out in this way so that Premier can hopefully cover the costs with their cash position and A Tate can actually retain quite a bit. This isn't that mega positive news for 88 because they only retain 30%, but still it is a huge step in the right direction. In fact, it's mentioned under the terms of the Salem Purchase Agreement, it seems that uh, the farming was for about up to 60%, I believe, or for 60%, I believe, yeah. And the payments that Premier will pay can be anywhere up to a total of $23 million. So it's not huge, but it has quite a bit of upside if the flow rates are to be similar to what the company is actually expecting. Premier will actually have the option to assume operatorship if the uh, program, the work program, is successful. So this is really, really impressive stuff for A8. And the company's shares have been lagging recently. In fact, they have been struggling severely to recover to the levels that they were in 2018. In fact, the shares have been hovering around levels of about one pence per share, if not lower. I mean, in the past year, they got 52 week lows of 0 0.64 pence per share. The current price is 1.02, or that was at least the last trade. In the past year, They've had highs of around 1.45, but if you look at the chart, they really have been lagging. We could probably have a look at their uh, TA side later, but most of their action has actually been over the past five years. In fact, 2016, 2017, they had highs of around four odd pence per share. So the fact that they've been lagging around such a low level now could be quite worrying in terms of individuals who are trend chasers because if you're chasing the trend on this kind of stock you would expect to see a breakout on this news but uh, it, it wasn't an amazing bit of news I, I don't think that uh, shareholders are going to like it that much because 88 is farming out the majority of their stake and not for a huge amount in fact only for 20 odd million being paid by Premier. So Premier really won in this deal, in my opinion, at least. In fact, 88 have a market cap of 65 million pounds. So it's possible that they could place for half and have to do it at a huge discount and dilute shareholders. But I guess this deal was in the interest of shareholders as when the company were to say, become a revenue producing company or eventually a profitable company it seems that they're able to put money towards, say, a dividend or just showing to their shareholders that they're making a good profit. It's interesting stuff, though. We'll have a look now at Premier's RNS, which is not specifically about this, but more so their half-year report, which is an interesting one that actually I've been following myself. and I'd be interested to see how things go. So we'll get into that now. Okay, it seems that uh, Premier has actually beat the uh, earnings forecast. They mentioned a profit after tax of $121 million for the half year to, I believe, the 30th of June 2019. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I can't stop saying wow to this. Um, I do hold shares, though, just for the record, so I'm, I'm really surprised and impressed. This company has mentioned that their net debt has reduced to $2.15 billion as opposed to $2.33 billion on the 31st of December 2018. 
this company at the moment. I'll try and be as unbiased as possible because I'm looking for an issue here. Uh, oil prices have fallen back a little bit since the average for this period so you wouldn't expect to see results this impressive over the next six months unless oil prices were to obviously recover i i've seen uh they've had a former formal zama cell process initiated initiated wow that we'll have to look at it in a second in a little bit more detail but they've got a full year forecast net debt reduction of about 300 million dollars which is basically within their forecast range they said something like 300 to 400 million dollars i believe so maybe in the lower end i assume um or 250 350 yeah. i'd have to probably tweet about that later but their production is a record for half one at 84,100 barrels per day impressive stuff 12 months on pro their toll map project is on schedule and under budget, forgive me there, um, it seems that, uh, yes, they mentioned their EBITDA figures being much uh, stronger than before, OPEX being lower than expected, cash margins being 35% higher than 2018 half one. Free cash flow of $182 million as opposed to $90 million in half one 2018. All the numbers seem to be looking really, really nice. Goodness me, the company's mentioned that they are actually going to sell the Zama field, which is one of their potentially large asset exploration plays. In fact, they had recently given a resource upgrade on this asset to about 870 million barrels of oil top end, I believe. And uh, this project is very impressive for the company as it could potentially bring in around 600 million dollars to about a billion dollars and they've mentioned that or anywhere from 350 million to uh, a 1 billion with 600 being a realistic target for the sale proceeds is really impressive because uh, this could actually lead to a material reduction in the group's debt levels to the point where institutions won't even blink about investing into this stock i'm i'm really impressed i didn't think it would happen it, it had been a rumor for a while they also mentioned obviously with alaska that we've talked about earlier being an idea for them to just diversify their assets we can see that uh, oil prices have been volatile obviously and they've acknowledged it and they have talked about Oil prices in 2019 being as high as $74 a barrel and as low as $50 a barrel. And the average they've got was about $65.7 per barrel in comparison to $70.6 per barrel in the previous half year in 2018. Well, actually, the corresponding half year in 2018, not the previous one. We're talking about half one 2018. So it seems that uh, the company had made a lot more money than they had in the previous period due to better margins and higher production. Two things that have really helped them. And uh, I believe oil prices right now are a little bit lower. They're about $60. They're off a little bit from yesterday's highs in the evening, but around the price that they closed in the UK, uh, it's closing time of equities, about 4.30 p.m. odd. So we're talking about Brent crude, the uh, products that they sell. And that's about $60 right now, as opposed to the average they achieved in the first half of the year at 65 ish But they do have a couple of hedges at $69, but I assume quite a bit of their hedging had come into play at uh, for the first half, in fact. I mustn't leave this out, though. This has been an observation. One thing that has been worrying for Premier in terms of their product sales, or uh, we could say they have two different areas of revenue. They have oil and then they have natural gas. And natural gas accounts for circa 50% of their production. So it is something quite important to consider. And the pricing of natural gas has been deteriorating over recent months. In fact, lows of around 
29 pence per therm for uh, UK natural gas prices. And it seems that in 2019, half one, the company has achieved an average price of 44 pence per therm. So this is slightly worrying. They did have a couple of hedges, so that's helped them a bit. But um, they mentioned 21.7 million therms, which is quite a bit too. It would also be important to consider that the company has a high interest rate payment on its debt and it has various financial instruments, including senior loan notes, UK retail bonds, term loans and revolving credit facilities. But they mentioned that the effective interest on drawn funds for the period recognised in the income statement was 8.3%. That's quite a large figure if you're trying to understand what's going on with the company's debt position. In fact, in previous reports that have been released for the company, they had quite a bit of interest payment costs. And I assume these will probably be realised in the second half. I don't know really. Or they have been realised in the first half because the company mentions they look to make 300 million debt reduction. They made about a profit of 120 million. So they could be just using the majority of, say, hedging in the second half of the year. It really depends on what the company decides to do. But nevertheless, I believe that this RNS is quite a decent one that surpassed my expectations. I didn't expect it to be like this. I, I would have expected the company to probably have a little bit of an issue somewhere, maybe a little impairment or whatever. They have mentioned, in fact, finance costs around $218 million for just these six months, which is quite a bit, but it's about the same that it was in 2018, $214 million, not much of a difference. Um, but in that period, they lost $24 million. In this period, they made $120 million. In fact, profit for the period, so we could talk about profit after tax, because they have a lot of tax credits, was $120 odd million. And that is impressive, to say the least. I mean, the market cap of the company is around 500 million pounds. So if we put that into dollars, probably something like just under 600 million dollars. So the company's trading on a PE. If we look at, say, an assumed net free cash flow of 300 million, or let's say 200 million, just to be safe in pound terms, and say a market cap of 600 million, the company has a P of about three, or oh, we're talking about forward P, assuming all of this stuff works out. But I mean, I'm holding my position, it will probably return to its billion pound market cap value soon. But uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how things work. One must remember that the net assets figure is quite important here. The company has net assets of about $1.1 billion, so about 800 odd million. But uh, at factoring a couple of things in, we'd say they're about a fair valuation, not that discounted in terms of obviously risk. But before this, the company was trading at a P of around five to six, and they had 52 week highs of 146.9 pence per share. Imagine catching those on 52 week lows of 54.7 pence per share. So this has been quite the trading stock, but uh, it's, it's very risky to stay invested. I must say from personal experience, I've seen this share go from 140 to 50, back up to just over 100. There's a lot of volatility to say the least. But um, it seems that the company is making a bit of a fundamental change. I mean, I am holding and I intend to hold after this. I can't really see anything that makes it a negative result. The AJ Energy acquisition doesn't really, or, or the farm out, sorry, doesn't really look that impressive. But they win, when I'm talking about they, I mean Premier premier win in comparison to 88 energy at least in my opinion and it seems that premier stands to gain quite a bit if 
ATA Energy shares are up, which I assume they should be because the company wasn't revenue producing before and now they won't likely raise money and say an equity dilution. Nevertheless, we will likely look at Premier shares later today in our chart pack episode. I've had a look at the company's chart a lot recently. I'm definitely surprised by this news. I'm happy to be holding. I'd be very surprised if the shares would be down. The fact that a formal sell process has been mentioned of Zama, I'm, I'm very interested. I mean, I have my convictions, but we'll see, we'll see. They are very positive, but we'll have to look back in today's chart pack in the evening and see whether I was right about this, but I'm not uh, recommending anything at all because that's not my place, <laughs> but hey. And finally moving on to Godwin PLC or Goodwin, whichever name you would like to give to this company. The ticker symbol is GDWN. The company has given their final results, I believe, for the entire year of 2019. That year ended the 30th of April, because obviously it's a, an accounting year, not specifically an actual year, because we should know that this year of 2019 doesn't actually end on the 30th of April, it's just the financial year, right? So, the company has reported a revenue up about 1.8%, to £127 million. They have shown a decent gross profit increase by about £5 million, but we must remember that gross is not actually the money that the company takes out because you have administrative expenses. That's only the profit that the company is making through their revenue minus the cost of sales, so minus the variable costs, if we're talking in business terms. And then you take away the fixed costs, which are the admin expenses and distribution expenses. Those are taken away. And then you have operating profit, which you'll take a couple of little things away, like financial expenses. And then um, you could potentially get some money in from shares of profits made from associate companies. And, and then you have your profit before tax, you get your tax, which I assume the company's paid a decent tax amount of something like four million pounds it says here so their profit for the year after everything is 12.4 million pounds gives them a basic earnings per share of about 159 pence per share the company shares are quite expensive by that look 35 pounds per share so the pe here is at least 20 in fact it could be nearing 29 odd if we do a basic calculation but I assume the company shares have been doing well to be priced here in fact yes they have in the past year they've had lows of 23 pounds per share and highs of 37 pounds per share they're just off recent highs of 37 pounds per share by about uh, six seven odd percent and the shares were up 6% yesterday. One could say maybe a leak, who knows. But uh, the earnings are just decent, in my opinion. It, it depends. It's, it's dividend stock, in fact. They've mentioned that they've upped their dividend a little bit to 90 pence per share. What does worry me once again is that this is another example of a company just paying dividends out. I don't see what their faith is in their existing future growth prospects who knows really but they do have net assets of 109 million pounds so there is a little bit of value to where they are a market cap of 252 million suggests that the company is a little bit overvalued it is a growth stock so they did deliver growth nevertheless but not something i'd normally look at for an investment because it seems over the past five years from lows it has tripled or so and from highs it's about where it was in 2014 so there's not much value in that sense they've got a significant resistance point at £41.75 that has to be broken all the way back in 2014 in fact if they can't break that then you've got some issues but anyways so that just about wraps up today's episode of the Quantum Cast but if you want insight 
into the technical side, then keep your eyes peeled for any additional content posted later on in the day, including analysis of charts of some of the companies discussed in this podcast. But first, head on over to our site, quantumresearch.co.uk, and download the relevant chart pack for this episode. I've been your host, Ryan Keir. Until next time.